We're live in studio with CBS's Training Days. Justin Cornwell, stay tuned. You are tuned in to Black Hollywood Live. Conversations. Boom! What up, y'all? Welcome to Black Hollywood Live's Conversation. It's your boy, DJ Jesse Janity. Y'all might have seen him in Chirac, you know what I'm saying? Y'all might have seen him in Chicago PD, you know what I mean? But we got him in studio, CBS Training Day, Justin Cornwell. What up, brother? How's it going, man? What is even doper is this is him right now. Uh. All right, so this is off your SoundCloud. This is off my SoundCloud right here. Which is Justin Michael Cornwell. Justin, Justin dash Michael dash Cornwell at SoundCloud. You can find that SoundCloud.com slash Justin, Justin dash Michael dash Cornwell. Give a little bit of a Bruno Mars kind of beat right there. Oh, well, you know, I mean, I think it's James Brown. We have similar influences. I'm with it. So now, when did we write this song? Oh, I wrote this during episode five while I was shooting Training Day. Really? Yeah, man. Are we getting any of the music on the show? You know, uh, I don't know if it's going to be on the show. The producers love it. Showrunners loved it. I sent it over to the guys who told me they're cutting it up right now and putting it in there, but I don't know where it's going to be or how it's going to show up. All right. Well, con- first off, congr- out for it. congratulations on the show. Thank you, man. Because, I mean, you're just out here killing it right now. Yeah, man. Um, CBS, to be a part of that family, to be a part of... Uh, a show that's been come off such a legendary movie, such an iconic classic. Right. Um, what was kind of your mindset as far as like auditioning, get, like getting the gig? Where was your mindset as far as you know, becoming this character? You know, it's crazy, man. When I, I picked up the script, I was on the set of something else, uh, something small, uh, photo shoot thing, and I picked up the script and uh, and I, I connected with it right away because me and the character had so many similarities. I was like, you know, I think I can play this character. I think I know where this character's coming from. I didn't have a lot of time to prepare for the character because I got the script at like 8 p.m. And they said they needed it by 9.30 the next day. It was 12 pages long. And I had monologues and stuff in there. So I'm like, okay, well, I, you know, time to use those actor powers okay. that I've gained over the last some odd years to make this audition work. But I showed up the next day, went ahead and put it on tape. My agent sent it out. And two hours later, Warner Brothers is like, hey, we got a plane ticket for you. Come down to L.A. And, and I had only been to L.A. once before, the week prior, doing a test. And uh, that was the first time I had it tested, been to L.A. So it was like, oh, my God, I'm going back. Would you look at God? Yeah, would you? Won't he will? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, now, you come from the theater world. Yeah. Now, would you say that that has helped you in acting as far as, I mean, because that isn't your audition. That's right. not a typical thing. Like, no. hey, two hours later, like, yeah, you got it. Come on, we want you on. Like, whoa. It's not, a, it's, you know, I mean, it's not a typical thing, but yeah, coming from acting, it definitely helps you. It helps you prepare faster. Mm-hmm. It helps you get into the mindset of characters. You know, I don't have to sit or, sit around and create a, a, a new process. I have the building blocks every single time I, I to discover where a character's coming from. I have those building blocks to kind of draw that out of them quickly. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how you have to be able to work, to, especially to do TV where you're, you know, you're asked to do something moments before you have to do it on camera. So you have to be able to work fast. And I know there's, like, obviously, there's tons of, fr- like, it's just ridiculous how much action is in this show. This is a lot of like, action. Like, it's, like, a little bit overwhelming. My anxiety <laughs> just is like, okay, well. Uh, this is explosions, you, yeah. As far as, like, stunts and stuff like that, I mean, are, are you open to doing that kind of stuff? Do they have a whole team for well, that? Well, you know, my whole thing is I've done a lot of choreography, uh, stunt stuff like that on stage where, you know, you, you can't have a stunt double. And I've I've done boxing, wrestling, and that kind of stuff. So I was you so know combat really trained for sure. And my whole thing was like you know if there's some stunts, I I you know I don't mind doing it. You know of course they don't want you to do it. If I get hurt, it kind of shuts down. If they, I get hurt, it kind of shuts down the whole production. They got to keep the fi- they got to keep the, the the face good. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we can't we can't mess up the billboards <laughs> just because you want to jump off a building and stuff. Right. But uh, uh, but I did a lot of my own stunts in the in, in the show. So if you watch it, you know ninety percent of the time it's me. Wow. Uh, okay, so obviously we're, you know, Kyle Craig. Tell me a little bit about his character. I mean, as far as you jumping into this role, mm-hmm. I mean, what kind of research do you do for a role like this? Because it's, it's funny because I was uh, talking to, um, who was I talking to? I forget who it was. But they were doing uh, Damon Wayne so for Lethal Weapon. I was just, how do you get into that mindset of you want to keep it fresh, you want to yeah. keep it, you don't want people to compare you, right? right? So for you to, to hop into this role, what was your kind of how how are you going to own it as your own you know i thought i was really lucky because this particular role it was the ethan hawk role and the comparisons between me and ethan hawk are hard to find right. really and but also that the comparisons with the character was hard to find my character 
the only thing he shares with Ethan Hawke is the similar dynamic that he has to the other officer that it, it was his training day. Right. But everything else about the character is different. This character is actually going undercover to investigate the the, the training officer. He's he's an ex marine, something that we're going to learn tonight. And it's and it's one of those kind of great things. And for me to prepare for this role, you know, I went out with the police officers on uh, out in South Central. You know, we chased down bad guys. I mean, like really what into was stuff. That like? It like, was a little, it was a little spooky because I didn't realize. I, I was just like, I realized that when you're just a regular person walking down the street, you know what I'm saying. You know, you don't think about the police or nothing like that. And if you see somebody doing something, they ain't gonna think about you. They're just gonna do whatever they're gonna do. But when you're the police, you have to the react. moment that you show up anywhere, you're the police. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You'd be like, ah! So everybody suddenly becomes that thing that, you know, whatever anxiety they have or if they're doing, if they're up to something, it starts coming out the moment you show up. Really? And so when you think about somebody's world being heightened, just think about being a person that every single time you even show up, people go nuts. Mm -hmm. And that's just what it was. Every single time they'd show up anywhere, just just they just say, hey, we just wanted you to talk to Justin. No! And they running away. They're like, I'm like, damn, we'll see. You can't trust police. <laughs> well, I, I mean, to, to kind of not to get too political with it, but I mean, as a black man to be in that that position to see that what was that like on the opposite side for you i mean it was definitely eye-opening for me you know just seeing the just seeing the juxtaposition of the two worlds because i've i've been in both now and it seems like okay i un i'm getting closer to understanding and having perspective for for each side it's mm. it's it's a uh, there and it's 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 a crazy world man it's what, a crazy world. What would you say was would be one thing that you took away from, like uh, mentally from that, as far as understanding the the opposite side? That police officers aren't on the street just to hurt people. There's of course people out there who are, um, um, you know, extremely over enthusiastic about their, you know, their duties, or, you know, uh, uh, and people who are using their power to hurt people because they are whatever. But honestly. The people that I met, they're out there. They're building up programs for children on the street. I went to the community centers with cops that look just like me, you know, building up programs and trying to get people to do something more productive than, you know, uh, working out here on the street. Uh, with the show like Training Day right now and all this stuff going on in the in the real world, I mean, it, it kind of can be a voice for that when you really think about it. Um, to kind of just open up those your eyes and, and that, 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 that side of the world for it. Um, you work with Bill Paxton. Yeah, for sure. Um, just the chemistry between the two of you guys, I think is powerful. Yeah. He's cool, man. He's, you know, I've seen him my whole life. So I've, I've really have an understanding of his acting style. Oh, so you had looked up to him. So what was it meeting him? On, on I mean, it was, it was almost like the same guy you met in the, on, on, in the movies. <laughs> he's really is the same guy. He kind of has that same kind of presence and uh, working with him is great because he's just one of these people who have seen everything. He's worked with everybody from, you know, from Helen Hunt to Ice T. You know what I mean? So it's just That's just a range right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just with everybody you could think about. You know what I mean? Um, just the you know he's an iconoclast. So you guys did the you, you well you guys did the People Choice Awards and apparently you weren't supposed to present with him. It was crazy, man. You know I. Uh, you know, I show up at the People's Choice Awards. We do the red carpet, and he was going to present with uh, Kate Beckinsale that night. Uh, and uh, he said, hey, Justin, buddy, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, we're going to leave right after I present the award, so just come backstage and wait for me. And I was like, all right, man, I'll see you back there. And so I went backstage, and I was sitting there waiting for him, and then uh, uh, he's got to present in like three minutes. Guy comes up to him, Kate Beckinsale's a no-show. You're going out by yourself. And he goes, Wait, but well, Justin's right here. He can he can come up and present with me. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do that. I can do that because <laughs> we're giving the award to Tom Hanks. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. And then he goes, no, you can't do it. You got to do it by yourself. And he goes, come on, don't make me go up there by myself. Don't make me do it alone. And he goes, all right, go, go, go. They changed it quickly in in five seconds, really. That's how easy it was. They weren't even gonna let us do it, but they changed it in five minutes, course, five seconds. That's how it always is. And then we walked out there, and if you guys caught the People's Choice Awards, and if you've seen us walking out there, we're kind of walking out there like with our arms outstretched, like "Yeah, victory!" Because that literally was the moment that we won. It's just 
and we and we Screw went Tom out there. Hanks. <laughs> we here. Yeah, and we got to present the award to Tom Hanks, and for him and Bill was a little Apollo thirteen reunion. Mm-hmm. And you know, for me, it was just cool. I got to meet Tom Hanks. I actually talked to him backstage a little bit, and just a, g- a couple of great guys. I feel like they both come out of a, a place um, from a place where you know humbleness kind of wins the day. Yeah. Uh, from from their from whatever whatever class they would graduated from, that's what they were taught. Humble and hardworking. Yeah. Because uh, I mean, and it's it, it's the fact that you get to work with these people. I mean, obviously, and also Spike Lee. I mean, the list of people you've been able to it's crazy. Now. It's kind of building with. up. Yeah. How is I mean, where does this stem from? I mean, because it comes from a mentality. Because you surround yourself with people that are attracted to your energy, right? So for you growing up, was this something that you always knew you had to do? Was it acting? Was it theater? Was it music? Because you do a little bit of everything. And, and that's and that's what it was. It's just kind of art. I wanted to tell stories. And tell stories through song. I tell stories through uh, characters. I tell stories through pictures. And they're, they're all kind of one thing. I feel, feel like uh, um, as far as how the medium that they're you know represented with is different. Mm-hmm. But they're all really one thing. Uh, I've always knew I wanted to be an actor. My grandmother ran a, a little bootleg video store uh, out of her backyard. I mean, out of out of the back uh, back of her house, and we had every single movie that you could have ever imagined. And I would just sit there and watch movies all day. And I wouldn't even go play with my friends. And all I would do is watch movies. And I just knew there was something something enchanting about it. Someone who can, you know, make. I know. I well, I know that's Johnny Depp, but it's not. Right. You What's know what a movie I mean? she used to put on that inspired you? That she would watch that. I, you know, I, I, it's hard for me to even go back to one movie, but my, I would say that my, the movie that made me believe in that kind of thing was like Willy Wonka, mm-hmm. in the Chocolate Factory, the original with Gene Wilder, and it wasn't that the acting was the most incredible thing. Well, Gene Wilder was the most incredible thing, but the music was also um, incredible, and um, I wasn't very much into musicals as it as it were. Uh, but with this particular story, the music and what was happening just felt so magical together. And uh, it inspires me today. I mean, before I would walk out on stage every single theater show, I did Muhammad Ali for a, a, a play. And every single time I'd walk out on stage, I was just like, come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. I'm like, I'm feeling that. I'm, I'm about to go and make this world. I'm about to go and create a world. And I needed to kind of put myself in that in that place do you ever have a problem um with doing too much at times like uh to it comes to a place where you want to be behind the camera you want to be in front of the camera you want to control you want to produce and does that ever get overwhelming or does it come to a place where it's like okay today i'm the actor i need to focus on acting i'm going to go in there because you're sitting here talking about you're writing music on episode five and yeah well absolutely i mean i think it just kind of comes to me as as it becomes inspired i was on episode five and i had this really i had this dance and like this little pep in my step there was something that was that was inspiring me and then i just started writing the song and so i think that's just how it works out for me uh, i don't have a problem with doing too much at one time because i can focus i i, I can focus on one thing at a time mm-hmm. so if i have to, if i'm shooting for an entire week of for episode five the weekend comes around of course i'm tired i sleep all day and if i get up and i got four hours that i'm just kind of watching tv maybe i'll just play around on the on the keyboard or maybe i'll draw something and um it it all depends on what i'm doing at the time while of course while i'm shooting training day it's the most important thing that i got going on but right after that you know i'm trying to work on other stuff and keep the juices flowing you know uh, like like we said, we've worked with all these big names. What would you say is one thing you've really learned from uh, Bill in, in working on this set? You know, Bill has taught me just how to bring energy and how to stay in it. You know, because sometimes I feel like as an actor, you know, you get you get to a place where you're doing something and it doesn't feel right, or you you're not where you want to be, and that's okay. That's okay not to be a hundred percent completely sure. And I used to be afraid of not being sure. Like, I have to know exactly what I'm going to do. I got to know where I'm going to hit. I got to know what this is. And I watch Bill, and sometimes he, he doesn't know what the hell. And But he makes it he makes it into something really beautiful out of, out of that chaos. It's that kind of controlled chaos. And I had to allow that to kind of breathe through my work, I think, is helping me become a better actor as well as uh, just a, uh, you know, a more generous actor to the other actors so we can go anywhere with the direction of the scenes and uh, play and find out what we 
are trying to discover together. Uh, how are the writers on the show with working with you guys as far as you guys becoming these characters? Are they sitting, do they sit down with you guys? Do they ever they just question like, hey, where do you think this is going? Yeah, we have a couple of the writers, but I think they do more of the, uh, I'm gonna listen out for what you say um, while while you're while you're eating at lunch, or I'm gonna, I, you know, it's like they want to have a conversation with us without talking. They just kind of want to pick up on us and you know have their little intuitions about us. But I feel like the process is you know it gets hairy when uh, the actor gets involved with trying to tell their own story because uh, then of course you would want to tell it in a way that's beneficial for you. And of course, if I see something I feel like, you know, it doesn't work, or maybe we could try it this way, you know, I always put that in, but I have that kind of input. But um, the writers, the writers try to write stuff like, you know, they love, they knew I love music, and, uh, and, and they knew I love, you know, that kind of stuff. They're like, oh, what can we do with music? With Justin, let's find something in there that has something to do with music. And, you know, so they kind of incorporate those things into the show. What would you say would be uh, filming one of the best moments that you guys have had on set? One of the best moments that we've had on set. Well, they're all so great. I could have a best moment for every episode. Well, what's um, one moment that just, just like, you kind of just look like, wow, I'm really doing this. Like, it really, like, just settled with you. Like, I'm sitting I, on the CBS lot. <laughs> you know, I don't know if I'm, I'm giving... Uh, That's fine, do it. <laughs> <laughs> anything away here, but... Uh, but Lou Diamond Phillips shows up, oh. and I'm with him and Bill, and we're just kind of doing this, and I'm just like, well, heck. <laughs> That's actually yeah. hair-raising. I'm not going to tell you when. You just got to watch every episode until it happens. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> if you could play any other character, what's one role that you really want to play? Well, you know, I, I want to... Ooh, I don't even know if I should say. I want to play a young Frederick Douglass. Okay, fair enough. Historical. Trump. I love historical you got characters. This? No, I'm just kidding. I mean, he's hot right now. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? He's, yeah. pe more and more people are <laughs> listening to him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then, as far as on the show, if you could switch characters with somebody, who would it be? For a day. For oh. one episode. Oh, for one episode. Training day. Everyone's minds get switched up. You got to be this other character. Who Who are you gonna be? I mean, of course, I'd be Frank. I mean, that's what I thought you were. Gonna I mean, I he, he'd be fun he's, with he's it got the like... quips, you know. <laughs> I, he's, got, I, I could be fun with it. Maybe Mary Ann's character. Why? Because she just has that tough as nails. Like I'm the, I'm the, the captain of the ship, and you know, you got to do what I say. She gets, she has some really cool lines to say to me, uh, uh, and that'd be kind of cool to say some of her lines. She mm -hmm. has good stuff. Boom. So training day tonight. Now, what, tonight we're gonna get. Uh, you said we're gonna come to a head at a at a, at a peak or something. Well, you know, tonight. Um, I'm still going down the rabbit hole trying to figure out what happened to my father. Now that I know that Frank and my father were partners, you know, I got to get more information out of him, but I know it's not going to come easy. He's not just going to readily hand over any information that he has. So I'm kind of going along with the police work here. We're doing more police work. You know, right now there's a, there's a girl who gets kidnapped and we got to, we got to find her. Boom. Now I watch a lot of, well, my roommate got me watching a lot of ID network okay. stuff, which like this is why I can't sleep at night because I'm just <laughs> up watching uh, Who Did I Marry? And oh yeah, and I was all on one stuff. of those shows. What do you, like as an paid actor? Yeah. Oh, okay. Cause I'm like, <laughs> 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 no, no, I played a police officer. You know, funny enough. Well, look at you. <laughs> uh, SVU's the you know all these these police shows. With this though specifically, Training Day. What is this bringing to other than I will say this what, visually it is like a movie. I'm feel right. like I'm watching a movie every week like, right. in the amount of action. But visually, it's beautiful. Yes. What would you say people are going to take away from this as a season, walking away from Training Day? I think what you can actually take away from Training Day more than other shows is, you know, that thing that you know that thing that propels you into going down a certain path. You never know what you're going to go down until you look back and say, yeah, I did walk down that, didn't I? <laughs> and I think this is what it was. It's, it's, I think this is has a little more murkiness than a lot of other shows, you know, especially of the other shows on CBS, um, which has great shows. But this show, I think, stands out amongst all those shows uh, in the lineup. And it's going to be something that every week, you know, you think you're watching a show that's uh, procedural, doing this, doing exactly what you think it's going to do, and then, and then it will surprise you. It does have that that element of yeah. you feel like you're walking with the character, 
but it, that's why I was saying it's, it, it's it's like when I watch like an SVU, you know what you're gonna get every single week. Yeah. But every episode, that's what, it's like a but movie, and I have to watch next week because it's like who they gonna blow up, who they gonna shoot up next. You know, that's what it is. It's kind of the anti procedural, and it's almost like that you want to set it up a little bit so you can break it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so right now we oh, got to set it up so we can break it. And I feel like uh, you know, it's one of those kind of cool things when it does get broken because it just take because you're already on the journey with these characters, and then and then it changes. It takes you out of the yeah. element. Uh, all right, well, we know what we're going to be watching tonight on CBS at what? 10 p.m.? Okay, training day. Justin, where can everyone follow you? You guys can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Justin underscore Cornwell. And if you guys want to check out my music, you can go to SoundCloud.com slash Justin dash Michael dash Cornwell. Check it out. So, oh, so wait, are we doing something with the music or is this just something like right now? It's just, you know, when you have an inspiring day, you're going to put something up. Oh, man, I'm doing stuff with the music. I've been working on music for over a decade now. So for me, it's uh, it's just as much of a storytelling d device and tool as as the acting, and I love and I love every everything that is creative, and I try to embody as much as I can. And uh, as far as the music goes, it's like you know, so come out and support me, and you guys are gonna see a lot more music. Boom, we're gonna get them on Black Hollywood Live the beat. We wanna appreciate you guys for tuning in. Make sure you guys hit me up everywhere at DJ Jesse J. You guys can hit us up also at BHL Online on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and subscribe to us on iTunes. Till next time, peace. From executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us, info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio, Instagram me, at KingXOBay. Thanks for tuning in. Hollywood Redefined. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.